I don't feel that I'm being entirely sincere wearing the hijab or I don't feel I'm being entirely sincere going to the masjid. So therefore I will stop. I will stop wearing hijab or I will stop going to the masjid. Or maybe I don't feel like I'm being sincere praying, so I'll stop praying. That actually becomes a tool of shaitan. Shaitan will sometimes use insincerity as a tool uh, to make us stop doing acts of worship. So what is the correct response? The correct response is that we continue doing that act of worship while at the same time struggling to purify our intention. Now, I wanna also add something very important here. And that is that no one, remember this principle, uh, one of the most important spiritual principles, no one can get to Allah without Allah. In other words, we cannot get closer to Allah or do what's right without the help of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In other words, we cannot worship Allah without the help of Allah. And this is why you find that, for example, in Surah Al-Fatiha, which we say at least 17 times a day, إِيَّاكَ نَعْبُدُوا وَإِيَّاكَ نَسْتَعِينَ Immediately after one another. First, we say to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you alone do we worship. And then immediately after that, we say, and you alone do we seek help from. And so what we realize from this, إِيَّاكَ نَعْبُدُوا وَإِيَّاكَ نَسْتَعِينَ is that we can't actually worship Allah without the help of Allah. So we ha we need uh, it, the isti'ana part of it, which is the, the, the seeking and the, the seeking help from, from Allah as well in order to be able to worship Allah. When it comes to sincerity, we have to seek the help of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and we ask Allah to not just, and this is important, not just make us sincere, but to make sincerity easy on us. I cannot emphasize enough the need to ask Allah for ease, the need to ask Allah to ease these things for us. One one mistake, another spiritual mistake that people uh, often make, which make, makes their life a lot harder, is that they ask for these beautiful spiritual, uh, you know, characteristics like like sincerity and sabr uh, and and uh, ikhlas and sidq and these really amazing, you know, um, so sincerity is ikhlas uh, and, um, you know, sidq is truthfulness uh, and sabr is perseverance and patience. So uh, sometimes people ask for these things which are wonderful, but they don't necessarily ask for ease in these things. And sometimes the path to actual pure ikhlas is quite difficult. And sometimes the path to sabr is quite difficult. Uh, so it's important that we not just ask for these uh, characteristics and we ask for these, these amazing virtues, but we also ask for ease in them. And we, we have this, of course, in the, in, in the lesson of the Prophet وسلم, where he told us that after every salah, we should say, Allahumma a'inni ala dhikrika wa shukrika wa husni ibadatik. Notice that Allah subhanahu, or the Prophet sallallahu is saying, Allah, in this dua, Allahumma a'inni, which means, oh Allah, make it easy for me. So the first thing he's saying um, in asking for these, these virtues that, that follow in this dua is to ask for ease. Allahumma a'inni, make it easy for me. Ala dhikrika, to remember you, your, your dhikr, make your dhikr easy for me. Dhikrika wa shukrika and and being thankful to you or being grateful wa husna ibadatik and the best of your worship. Again, you're we're being told by the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi to ask for ease in achieving these things. So it's very, very important that we ask the help of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to help us to be sincere and to purify our intention. But we should not uh, stop doing that act of worship because then we would be falling into the trap of shaitan. Why is sincerity so important? Why is ikhlas so important? Well, um, we know that for an action to be accepted, we have to have sincerity and we have to have the right intention. And in fact, when shaitan was uh, speaking to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala about trying to misguide uh, the, his slaves, he said something very interesting. He says um, that he would be able to, to, to uh, misguide his slaves Except for, and he, this is this is the thing he said, illa ibadaka minhum al mukhlasin, that he will be able to be successful in misguiding the 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 servants or the slaves of Allah subhanahu wa taala, except the slaves that are sincere, that that the shaitan even acknowledged that he would not have power or he would not be successful rather because. 
in fact, shaitan doesn't have actual power over anyone. Um, and, and this is something what we, we, we hear or we're taught in another uh, section of the Quran in Surah Ibrahim where, where the shaitan says um, on the Day of Judgment, مَا كَانَ لِي عَلَيْكُمْ مِنْ سُلْطَانٍ إِلَّا أَنْ دَعَوْتَكُمْ فَاسْتَجَبْتُمْ لِي فَلَا تَلُمُونِ وَلُمُوا أَنفُسَكُمْ That shaitan says that I didn't actually have any sultan over you. Sultan is power. So shaitan doesn't actually have power over us. إِلَّا أَنْ دَعَوْتُكُمْ Except that I called you. فَاسْتَجَبْتُمْ لِي And you answered my call. فَلَا تَلُمُونِ وَلُمُوا أَنفُسَكُمْ So he just very clearly says, so don't blame me, blame yourselves. I mean, it's very clear uh, that this is what shaitan will admit on the Day of Judgment, is that he didn't actually have power over us. All he could do was call us. All he could do was waswasa, whisper. And it is we who choose to listen and follow or to refuse or and and not follow. So it is it is not that shaitan has power over us, but rather um, it's that shaitan is saying and admitting here uh, that he will not be successful. Uh, he he said he will not he will not be able to misguide uh, the the ones who are sincere, the ones who have this quality of ikhlas, mukhlasin, the 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 servants who have uh, sincerity.